Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome and thanks for joining this webinar, uh, which is a joint webinar between Breakthrough Action and the PMI VectorWorks project. Um, as we get started, uh, I think some folks are probably still logging on um, right at the moment, but we will try to use the chat, sorry, the Q&A box um, to put your questions in as you have questions as we go through the webinar. Uh, my name is Hannah Conker. I'm the project director for the PMI VectorWorks project. Um, and I'll be taking you through kind of a brief introduction and tour of the new website that we've created today. Um, we're really delighted to launch this website, uh, which rounds up the key data about the use of ITNs country by country. Um, this website expands on the PMI networks and the PMI VectorWorks report on ITN access and use. Uh, which was a Word document that I will probably refer to in the webinar as the paper report, even though we never really printed it. Um, but this resource was one of the most downloaded resources uh, over the course of the last five years of the VectorWorks project. So the data that we present here in the website is targeted towards decision makers, uh, particularly those who are interested in optimizing ITN use and prioritizing resources for social and behavior change. Um, we focus on the indicator of the ratio of ITN use to ITN access because this is an indicator that isolates the net use behavior um, so that we're just looking at people who have a net to use and of those people how many are using their nets. I'm not going to dive into a deep dive of those indicators but I will kind of walk you through as we go through. So let's see if I can share what we've got here. So here is the website. This is the front page of the website. We have a menu bar up at the top. And then on this first page, we try to present a really broad overview of the picture of the various key ITN indicators uh, across the different continents. So as a reminder, all of this data is derived from DHS surveys, malaria indicator surveys, and uh, some multiple indicator cluster surveys that UNICEF implements. And we're trying to look at the determinants of ITN use uh, on a broad scale. So geographic location, regional variations, rainfall patterns, age, gender, urban and rural residents, wealth quintile, et cetera, et cetera. So the default view on the front page is the ratio of use to access. And here we've got the map um, color coded. So green is good, yellow is kind of mediocre, and below 60% uh, is red, and that's not so good. And we can kind of go into some reasons for that, why that may be the case here. So this here, the ratio of use to access, is really that picture of the behaviors. Among people who could use a net, how many are using it? But we can also look at the indicator of percent of households owning an ITN, what that looks like based on the most recent survey data from each country. We can also look at population access, which isn't so great because people tend not to have quite enough nets in their household to give everybody access to a net. And these surveys are generally not done uh, as a rule right after a mass campaign, which is really the only time that population access is really high can also show the percent of the population that used an ITN the previous night. This really can't be any higher than population access because you can't use a net if you don't have one. So uh, there's a lot more work to do to make sure that everybody has enough nets in their household and can uh, get nets when they need them as their nets wear out. So that is the overview of that sort of front page map. Um, you can click on the map to get to a different country. Little things pop up here uh, with the uh, indicator values for each of those things and notes about whatever survey it was that was the most recent um, that's publicly available there. If you scroll down a little bit, um, we also provide the sort of average use to access ratios over time. So this can give you a sense of what that trend has been over time. This kind of depends on, you know, where the surveys were done in a given year. You can see it's more or less, you know, stable over time. Um, but here in 2006, we had the uh, 
Eswatini, formerly Swaziland, uh, survey and a Niger survey, which really brought down the average among the surveys for that year. So, um, let me check. Great, so just uh, moving on, that's the front page. So again, the overview there. So let's dive into a country. Let's go to Malawi. So if you click on a country, you'll get to the country page. You can also use the navigation bar up here at the top, uh, which is divided into uh, major continents, regions. Um, and then within each region, we've got you know East Africa, West Africa, Central, South, et cetera. Um, we've also got some Asian countries and some countries in the Americas as well. So here we are in Malawi. For Malawi, and each of the country pages is structured in the same way, we've got right up front the map of the ITN use to access ratio. So you can get a really visual picture of what that situation looks like in terms of the net use behavior um, across the country. And for most of these maps where we have GIS data points available in the DHS or the MIS, we run an interpolated map like this one here, which will show you, you know, kind of hot spots where there might be lower or higher um, values for the use to access ratio. So across most of the southern two regions of central and southern regions of Malawi, things look pretty good, they're green. And then you've got these hot spots here where things are a bit lower and those correspond with, uh, if you know Malawi, the, the major cities uh, in those areas. Up in the northern uh, region, so these two areas here, the northern region, you've got slightly lower um, use to access ratio in the very north of Malawi for this particular survey, which is the MIS 2017. So to give a little bit more context, we also provide the summary, a very short summary of the recent ITN distributions in Malawi. Um, this is taken from uh, PMI MOPS and some of the Alliance for Malaria Prevention uh, meeting minutes, which have been really helpful. Um, and we're trying to keep those up to date, but as you can imagine, it's uh, an ongoing process. So then you can just scroll down uh, to see more things, but you can also use this navigation bar here in blue to skip ahead to any particular um, data presentations that you're interested in. So we'll just scroll down for now and kind of present these one by one. So here we have uh, the first chart uh, for the country. We have ITN indicators, uh, national results over time, essentially. And so here, Malawi has a number of surveys, uh, more than average, I would say. So we wanted to kind of showcase that. And you can see in green, the use to access ratio over time, kind of starting at this lower level down here in 2010, jumping up in 2012, and then, you know, this sort of slight decline, but still, you know, in the green area here above uh, 80, 90 percent um, over time. And you can also see the trends in the overall indicators. So ownership in orange and then uh, use uh, in blue and ITN access in yellow. So that gives you a sense of how that uh, behavior of net use has been changing uh, or not over time, as the case may be. We provide the definitions of those indicators here on the side, just in case you need a little refresher. And then a neat feature for the website uh, is that you can also download the data. So if you click on the download data button, it will download a comma separated values file, which you can open straight away in Excel. It'll just give you a, a table that you can graph if you don't like the colors here, but you want to use it for something. Um, you can make your own graph and uh, put that into your presentation. So continuing down, um, we've got uh, analysis here for each country uh, where the data is available by age, gender, and ITN supply. And this is based on work by Balanli Olapeju at CCP um, and others which was published last year in Malaria Journal, looking at the proportion of people that used an ITN the previous night, not among those with access, but just sort of your regular standard population use of an ITN the previous night, but stratifying it into these age groups, uh, so zero to five down here, five to 10, 10 to 15, et cetera. And then we also stratify it by male and female, so males in gray and females in purple, and then we further stratify by the household supply of ITNs. 
So for households that have some nets but not enough, these are in the dashed lines here. And then the solid lines indicate these are people living in households that do have enough ITNs for every two people in the household. So this graph, I would say, looks the same, roughly speaking, uh, whether or not you're in Malawi or anywhere else. Um, we tend to see that here in the households that uh, don't have quite enough nets, we have a very high rate of use for that zero to five age group. That tends to decline as the kids get older, as we see here in Malawi in particular. Um, and then it jumps up again and we see that women, so here in purple, are slightly prioritized over men as they reach adulthood. So women of reproductive age are prioritized for the nets in the household when the household doesn't have enough nets. This is what we want. This is what we've been telling people to do is to prioritize you know, pregnant women, uh, women of reproductive age, and the very small children. Um, and that is indeed what they're doing. Things sort of level out here in the older age groups, but we have this challenge here where the children from ages five to about 15 in Malawi are really not using nets to the same degree as everyone else when there aren't enough in the household. So we wanna look and see what happens when the households do get enough debts. Do those disparities level out? And they do to a great de degree. I mean, it's not perfectly level here. There's still some decline for those you know, young children and teenagers, but you can see that this solid line is much flatter than the, uh, than the dotted line, indicating that once households have enough ITNs, the age and the gender disparities tend to get minimized and ITN use is relatively high um, overall, even not uh, once those households have enough nets. So this is something that we like to look at in terms of, you know, just double checking, are the right priority groups being prioritized? And uh, is the problem for the sort of teen and children years, does that get minimized once the household has enough ITNs? Because we're looking for that behavior of use. We want to make sure that people have a net to use. And if this is lower, it's probably because um, those households just don't have enough nets for those kids. So then we move on down to seasonal variation and ITN use. This is one of my favorites. Um, we've got the different surveys here plotted um, over the course of the months of the year in which they were fielded. So essentially, on the y-axis, we've got the percent of the population using an ITN if they have access to an ITN within their household. So again, we're isolating that net use behavior um, in use to access ratio. And then along the x-axis, we have the months of the year and they're you know, just the first letter because otherwise it gets quite busy. Um, each of the surveys that we have for Malawi is then plotted. So for example, 2016 survey here in bright red, uh, which is actually a 2015 and 2016 survey, but we break it up because it's a little easier. Um, 2015 uh, here in the pink, we have the October sort of rate of use for people who were surveyed in that month of October, the use among those with access, November, December, and then January and February. So this really allows us to look at the seasonal trends of ITN use among those with access over the course of a year, over the course of rainy seasons. Um, and uh, while we don't plot the rainfall here, we do provide in this pink shading the malaria transmission season, which is sort of an average malaria transmission season in Malawi based on the old uh, MARA maps, the Mapping Malaria Risk in Africa maps. Um, which are now outdated, but it was, um, we needed sort of a broad stroke malaria transmission season uh, to put in here. So that's what we've got. What we wanna check here is, is there seasonal variation? So does this curve kind of over the course of the year come down? And it, I think that it does. Um, certainly in the dry season here, it seems to be a little lower and then up these other surveys here tend to be kind of around the same area and you know, offer that peak. ITN use behavior um, at the time when the malaria transmission season is really going strong. So if we need to boost ITN use behaviors at the beginning of the transmission season, so here they're a little bit low in December, um, they're not terrible, but they're not you know, maybe as high as we would like them to be, maybe we need to focus our SBC efforts to kind of boost that um, late dry season, early rainy season net use so that we have that full protection um, as much as possible throughout the entire transmission season and beyond, frankly, because there's still some transmission in the, in the dry season. 
So this really helps to interpret some of the data that we see at the very beginning, especially if you only have, you know, the map of the most recent survey. Um, the map of the most recent survey will combine all of these values from the different months that the survey was fielded in, of course. But when we break it out by month of the year, we can see a little bit better what that seasonal pattern is and um, get a better sense of what we might need to do in terms of uh, targeting our SBC appropriately. If you want to know more about this and sort of on a broader continental subregional scale in terms of rainfall and when mosquitoes emerge, um, we provide a link to the paper that we published uh, last month in the American Journal of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. Um, so I really recommend that you check that out. So scrolling on down, we've got another chart um, of the use access ratio looking at wealth quintile here, and then also by residence. And you can just kind of click to transfer between each of those two data presentations. Um, let's start with wealth quintile. So this is a feature that we had in the table in the old paper report, but here we're now able to chart it a little bit more nicely. Over time, we can see that the differences between wealth quintiles in their use access ratio uh, were not very big at the beginning uh, of the survey period here in 2010. Um, quite different here in 2012, and then they've kind of like been coming together over the last several years, coming a little bit closer together. So there is some difference between the wealth quintile and generally the richest uh, wealth quintile here has had the lowest ITN use uh, if they have access to a net. And that's something that we tend to see kind of overall since the richer households have, you know, several other means of protecting themselves against mosquitoes or they live in slightly less uh, endemic areas, et cetera, et cetera. So we can also check by residence. What does this look like in terms of urban and rural? So rural in the darker line here, um, a little bit higher uh, use access in Malawi. Uh, in 2012, and then kind of declining over time and then sort of switching places a little bit, although these maybe aren't significant um, over the last few years. So again, coming together in terms of that net use behavior um, over, the, over the course of the last seven years. And again, you know, the download data button is here. You can download data for the residence graph or the wealth quintile graph. You can plot that in your own, um, in your own analyses, et cetera. Um, and then maybe I'll just kind of scroll up and uh, say that if you need to copy uh, any of these maps or the charts here, um, we have this little pop up that comes up. So if you double click on the image until it's highlighted, then you can copy it. Uh, you can press control C to copy it and then you can paste it into whatever PowerPoint or document you need uh, to use it in later. All right. So then, almost last but not quite least, we have the observations and the implications. So this was a feature of the old paper report as well. Um, we have the observations based on the data that we're looking at uh, here, um, talking mainly about the use to access ratio, but also making some notes about overall levels of access um, and overall levels of ownership, trying to kind of summarize what we're seeing in the data for programmers, and then providing some implications for programming. Um, are there specific target groups that we can identify, um, such as you know, a particular wealth quintile, or is there a particular region of the country, or is there a particular time of year where ITN use is lower than we want, lower than it needs to be, and we want to make some efforts to target uh, social and behavior change efforts in that area. Um, so that is uh, updated now for each of the countries that we have um, in this. I think we've got about 45 or 46 countries altogether on the site. And if you want to know more about how to increase net use, uh, we have this handy social and behavior change for ITN's toolkit, uh, which is linked here at the bottom of each of those um, observations and implications sections there. We had a webinar about that a few months ago. You can find that webinar recording on the Breakthrough Action website. Then, uh, in last place, uh, down at the bottom, we have the data table of all those key indicators. So this is very similar to the old data table, which was the sort of primary function of that paper report. For each of the indicators, we sort of summarize it by, you know, regional breakdown, wealth quintile breakdown, the, and the residents break down here. So this data is what is feeding into those uh, charts that you see up earlier. Um, but sometimes you just want the numbers and you want them all in one place. So we have ownership, we've got access, 
we've got use and then we have the use to access ratio. Um, in the old paper, paper report, this was color coded in terms of the sort of red, blue, red, <laughs> green, yellow uh, color scheme. And we're not quite able to make that work within the infogram uh, platform here. But uh, we're hoping that the data presentations up above, the charts and the graphs are uh, a better representation to help communicate what is going on um, in that particular country. All right. So let's see, I think just to show you, um, you scroll all the way down, once you get all the way down or even part way down, um, there's this little green thing up here that will zoom you all the way back up if you wanna save your fingers for scrolling. Um, let's go to Senegal and we won't go through in as much detail, but just to show you a few, um, few things that may be different from one country to another. So here in Senegal, uh, we actually need to update this map with the updated shapefile because we're missing a couple regions that have divided um, at some point in the past. But this is more of a regional map. It's not interpolated. We don't have those tiny hotspots, um, but the colors here are assigned to the regions sort of based on the overall regional level of ITN use to access ratio. Um, we still have our distribution information. We have the national results and here Senegal has actually even more surveys than Malawi and they do a continuous DHS um, over the last few years. So there's, there's lots of data. We can see that their use to access ratio in green has kind of gone up over time, which is really nice to see. And their you know, overall levels of access and use have also gone up um, as they've been doing the, their, their ITN distributions. Just to kind of note on their age and gender um, uh, graph here, they have sort of much flatter levels of disparity um, and prioritization in the households that don't have enough ITNs. And then it's actually really flat here once the households do have enough ITNs. So you can see how those disparities really get minimized once those households have enough ITNs for all the people in their household. We still see that there's a prioritization of the women of reproductive age, sort of got that 15 to 40 age group here um, over the men. Um, and, you know, I don't mind seeing that. That seems fine to me. <laughs> they need to be prioritized because uh, they're biologically vulnerable. Going into the seasonal variation, just a note for Senegal, uh, because they have a lot of surveys and because those surveys are done over a longer period of the year, um, there are a lot of lines here. Um, but you can also see Senegal has this sort of shorter transmission season, more intense, um, and that there's generally the peak of ITN use behavior is occurring within that, within that, um, that time of the year and then a little bit lower now over the, the dry season. Um, this dip, I think, is when they surveyed in Dakar. So there's occasionally some outliers where, you know, if all of the survey field work happened in one particular area in a given month, that can um, kind of make the graphs bounce around a little bit. Um, we have the same types of graphs for the wealth quintile. Um, here and for urban and rural residents, you can see how that goes over time. Um, and then the observations and implications. And then of course, all of the data down here for Senegal squished into um, the same size table. So that's what we have for the uh, 45 countries around the world. Um, if you want more background about the indicators themselves or the methods, we have a page about the methods um, in terms of what we're calculating for each of the data sets um, and the stratification that we're doing. We also provide here a Stata do file to calculate the indicators that are used in this report. Actually, it's the, it's the original paper report, so it's not all of the graphs and everything here. But if you're looking to calculate ITN access within your own household survey data set or within an MIS or a DHS, this is really helpful. We've annotated it um, and you know a few people have found it and used it and let us know that it was really helpful for being able to, to get that indicator um, and look at their results in a more meaningful way. Um, we also have a little page here about the, about the site and the report. Um, we link again to this data do file here. And there's a couple of links to the ITN access indicator video that DHS program produced both in English and in French. Um, yeah, just some abbreviations and some uh, citations here. So 
in terms of updates for the site, uh, just in the same way that under PMI Vectorworks, we tried to update that paper report each time new data was released. The plan is uh, still under breakthrough to be updating the results for any given country once their data is publicly available from the most recent MIS or DHS. Uh, we've now automated a lot of the functions to produce the charts and the data, so it won't take us very much time at all to make those updates. And uh, so I think, you know, within a day or two of those data sets being released, we should be able to have the updates reflected in the website. Um, and then finally, I think, you know, we've put together the key um, data presentations that we have found useful over the past few years in trying to communicate the situation of ITN use and access. Um, but if there are other sort of country level data presentations that you're interested in, maybe there's an indicator that you really are keen on using um, or a chart that you would really want to see for every given for every country you know we're happy to look at what is going to be most useful for you as you plan your programs um, you know for me I think the main takeaways from the site and from this uh, exercise have been you know net use behavior is really quite strong you know people beneficiaries are doing their job when they have a net in the household by and large on the whole across the continent, you know, people are generally using nets um, when they have them, when they really need to use them in terms of peak transmission season. Um, and then the times and the places where they're not using them seem to be more related to their perception of risk in terms of having other prevention opportunities um, because of their, you know, wellness or their underlying levels of parasitemia or the time of year and there's mosquitoes, et cetera. So I think, it's been really reassuring to have that kind of good news that people are using the nets um, that we are distributing. Obviously, there are places in certain times in certain areas where you know, nets are wearing out faster than we might like, or um, nets are being used in, for other purposes before they're sort of done being useful for sleeping under. That's something that we want to keep an eye on, certainly. But I think the overall picture, all the screen, is a really good sign. And it's basically the key message that I would like to leave you with at the end of this. Um, so I expect people are clicking around on their favorite countries by now. Uh, there may be questions. Uh, I thought we'd open it up for questions and answer or discussion um, if people have questions about the webinar. So thanks very much. Thank you, Hannah. At this time, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to submit any questions. And Hannah, it looks like we have uh, one question in the Q&A panel. Uh, is there any kind of indication about whether the surveys from which these data are de derived are considered accurate? For example, if a survey was done during a mass campaign, it would produce highly skewed results and thus provide potentially misleading data. How would someone know if that type of issue was a factor in looking at these data? Thanks. Uh, yeah, that's a question that we get uh, reasonably often. Um, I mean, the, the DHS and the MIS surveys are, you know, two, two level randomized household surveys. Um, and it's, I think the data that they obtain are accurate in the sense that they're representative of what is happening at that time in the country. Um, yes, access will be higher if the survey is done during a mass campaign or it may be higher in certain regions of the country that have already had that distribution versus the regions of the country that where the survey happens before the mass distribution. So in that sense, yes, ITN access, ownership, and you know, uh, overall levels of use would be different in some parts of the country than others. The nice thing about the use to access ratio is that it controls for levels of access essentially because it isolates the behavior. We're relating, you know, what is the behavior of use among people who have nets in their household, a net in their household to use. So that helps to kind of um, smooth out any skewness in our interpretation of you know, what the overall coverage is and really focus in on the behavior. And I think what we're seeing is that you know, ITN use among those with access is determined by all these other factors and not, um, not sort of the underlying uh, levels of access uh, in the country. 
So I think what we've tried to do in the, in the data set is provide more, or sorry, in the website is provide more of that context. You know, what is the season of the data collection, right? What is the timing of that data collection vis-a-vis -vis previous campaigns? So, you know, we're not presenting ITN access over time since the last distribution, but if you go to the campaign section, you can kind of say, all right, so their last campaign was 2016 and this survey was in 2018, so it's about two years since the last campaign. You know, that might inform your interpretation of what the overall levels of ITN access are. Um, but the ITN use among those with access, as we've seen, is, is relatively um, static and stable over time. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, we have another question. Um, we have recently seen quality concerns with LLINs. Have you had any analysis on how such an issue could impact the use to access ratio? Yeah, thanks. Um, that's also a great question um, and one that we've been thinking about quite a bit as well. So the use to access ratio is sort of dependent on the, on the nets that are in the household. So let's say um, in a given country, there's a net that was distributed that either, um, I guess it depends on the quality issue that you're, that you're talking about. If the insecticide level is disappearing, um, I think it's from a household perspective, maybe more difficult to tell um, that that's happening. So I wouldn't expect households to discard those nets much earlier, um, if earlier at all. If, for example, the net was manufactured and the seams, you know, weren't sewn correctly or something, and the net is just falling apart at the seams, those nets will be discarded, probably repurposed, and therefore they won't be in the household uh, for the survey data collectors to come and assess. So in that sense, uh, I don't think there'll be a huge impact on the use to access ratio itself. There will be an impact, of course, on the overall levels of access and the overall levels of use because use can't be much higher than, than access. So in terms of the net use behavior, the use to access ratio doesn't necessarily help us figure out if there are quality concerns with LLINs. Um, what we need there is really the standard PMI durability monitoring approach to, to track those nets, you know, a sample of those campaign nets over time and see what's happening to them, how many holes they're getting at different time points, how big those holes are, et cetera. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, we do have another question. Uh, that, that previous question came in from Harkirat Singh Semi. Thank you for your question. And we have another one from RRL3. Uh, Sierra Leone is one of, one of just a handful of countries in the red for the use access ratio. But in the observations and implications section for that country, it begins by saying the use access ratio is generally high in Sierra Leone and ITN use among those with access is high during transmission season. These statements in the map seem to be at odds. So how should should these results be properly interpreted? Thank you. Um, I think you get a prize because, let's see. Um, so we've got the map here. We'll double check that because I think in the data table, um, we may have a, a challenge with the map uh, to some degree. So we'll double check that. I think here's the national results for use to access. So these are really quite high and that's where we're drawing the conclusions from for the observations and implications. Even in the seasonal results here, you know, everything is really quite high and there's this dip down in November, which possibly is uh, the capital city. So we will double check that. It may not, uh, it probably shouldn't be showing up as red on that map. Um, that was just an error. The mix. I just uh, fixed it. It was just an okay. error on the table. Sorry about that. All right, <laughs> thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you for calling to attention um, these these things as we get the site up and running. It's really helpful to have all these eyes on it to make sure we're catching any um, tiny typos and stuff like this. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, there's a question in the chat box. Uh, what is the best access to use ratio? Yeah, that's a good question, too. So um, we have been using, let me zoom up here again. Um, we've been using uh, 
basically a ratio of 0 0.8, or if you want to think about it as 80%, um, because that's sort of the target for the other indicators as well. Um, I think, you know, we're never going to get 100% of people using a net all the time, consistently, perfectly, et cetera. Like there's just people and circumstances and times of year where it's not going to happen. So, you know, an 80% target for me is, is good. Um, that's what we've been promoting. So that's why we've set sort of equal to or above 80% ratio as, as green here. Um, the country that has the highest ratio of ITN ac uh, use to access is actually Madagascar. So if the question is really who has the best ratio, um, that's your answer. Thanks, Hannah. And another question coming in from Gage Karapita. Karapetian, and my apologies for mispronouncing names today. Um, have you or will you look into how people, how people-centered design of ITNs may affect the access use? Hi, Gajik. Uh, yeah, thanks for that question. Um, yeah, so under um, a DFID-funded project in Ghana, uh, we did do some human-centered design, and there's uh, a little bit more information about that on the CCP website right now. Um, looking at targeting uh, or using human-centered design to develop ITNs that might fit the preferences of upper and upper middle class wealth quintiles a little bit better than the standard, you know, campaign nets. But the idea is then for manufacturers to produce those and then sell them at full price to those wealth quintiles because people in those wealth quintiles can, can afford them. Um, so there, I think in Ghana, people were interested in having a zipper closure. They were interested in having this sort of pop-up tent-like feature, so they didn't really have to hang it from anywhere, but it sort of stayed up over the bed. Um, and those nets have been selling, I think, quite well. Um, and again, there's more information on the CCP website about that. Um, whether or not it's cost-effective to do that at a kind of global donor-funded population, nationwide, multi-country scale, um, I think is the question. Um, given that the ratio of use to access is already, you know, good here, green in most places, I don't think we're going to get that much improvement, generally speaking. And again, this is on a population level, right? Like individually, we can debate it, but on a population level, um, it's going to be hard to, to get that much more improvement for minimal cost. Um, but I don't think that that means that we shouldn't keep looking at it, particularly in places uh, where things are a little bit uh, lower than we would like. Ghana is one of those countries. Nigeria is one of those countries. Um, you know, Zambia and Zimbabwe, parts of Senegal. Um, also, uh, you know, there's areas where, where this may be more effective as a strategy for certain target groups, um, but not necessarily at the, at the high level global procurement side. Thank you, Hannah. And we have a question coming in from Gabrielle. Uh, what would you recommend an SBC program focus on with regards to ITN use after using this website? What decisions can the data help us to make? Great. Yeah, so um, I think it's, you know, obviously depends on the country. Uh, for me, the value of this website is that it helps you to pinpoint certain areas or groups within the country that you may need to work a little bit more on but it also helps you figure out where you're already doing reasonably well. So I think it's important, you know, as public health professionals, we're always looking to solve problems. We're always looking to improve things. We're always sort of expecting maybe that, that things aren't going uh, the way that we, we want them. Um, but actually the behavior of ITN use is going the way that we want it in a lot of places. And recognizing that we've, met those targets uh, among a lot of population groups is, is really exciting and it's good to have good news. Um, so we may not need to do as much SBC for net use among those populations that are already at that green level. We may need to refocus those efforts on the populations that are still at risk and maybe not using their nets as much as we would like. Um, so refocusing those efforts uh, on SBC for those targeted groups is, is the goal of the website. It's helping you identify where in the country or what times of year you really need to focus on. Generally speaking, I think, you know, as we look at the map of overall population with access to an ITN, this is where we need to make some major gains. 
uh, this is not this is not a great picture. Um, if we want everybody to be using an ITN, we need to get this much more you know yellow and green overall. Um, and the ways to do that, you know, more nets obviously, but also perhaps encouraging people to take care of their nets for longer, retain them for longer. Um, making sure that we can extend that net lifespan at the household level so that people are protected with a net for a longer period of time. And thank you for that, Hannah. Uh, we have a question in the chat box um, regarding, um, sorry, I just lost my chat box. Here we go. Um, in Cameroon, what the MIX 2014 show is true, but we are now on our third campaign distribution and people are more interested in what can be done to eliminate malaria, like any vaccine that they can use, rather than using the ITN. How can we encourage them to go back to using ITNs? Uh, great, that's a great question. Um, so I think as we do more and more net distribution, it is important to keep monitoring the ITN use to access ratio. Um, it is possible that as we go on, people get tired of nets and that ratio may go down because of that. It's also possible that it may go down because people feel that they have other means of protection or that they're less at risk. So as SBC professionals, we also wanna make sure that we're encouraging people to use nets uh, for things that aren't related to malaria necessarily, a good night's sleep, protection from other nuisance biting insects or lizards or cockroaches or whatever, um, and encouraging them to keep on with the habit of net use, uh, even in the face of, of other prevention measures. So I think this data and the website, you know, as we go along over time, we will be tracking and monitoring to, seeing, to see if, you know, in Cameroon, is the next survey gonna show that ITN access and use is lower? Is it gonna be the same? I think anecdotally, uh, you know, a lot of people complain about nets. Um, that's, you know, that's standard <laughs> in focus groups that we've run over the last 10 years. Uh, at the same time, the overall population level data show that the, the general behavior is, is, quite, is quite common. So I think keeping an eye on that with the data um, is, is really important. Thanks, Hannah. And we have a question here from Luke. We have seen malaria deaths plateauing and maybe even increasing in the past year or two. Is there any evidence from your data that this could at least in part be due to changes in ITN use behavior? Thanks, Luke, for that question. Uh, no, there's no evidence from the uh, behavioral side that this would be due to the changes in ITN use behavior. Um, the ratio has been really steady over the last 10 or more years actually. Um, and we haven't seen any significant changes in it globally. Some countries it kind of goes up and down a little bit at the national level. Um, and some of that is due to seasonality and some of it's due to changing populations. But I would say that of all of our problems uh, with the increasing deaths, I don't think it's, use, it's due to people's net use behavior. I think it may be due to, you know, obviously insecticide resistance. Uh, and overall levels of access. So if people don't have enough nets, they can't use them and, and that's gonna affect um, cases and deaths more severely. Great, thank you. Um, let me see. Oh, we have a question from Emmy. Uh, do you think that insecticide resistance can impact negatively the access to use ratio? The fact that insecticide, insecticide resistance causes the nets to fail in killing mosquitoes and that we hear people saying that the mosquitoes are dancing on the nets or waiting to bite people once they are out of the nets. Is it a concern or a risk for people to use them less? Um. So I don't, I mean, I, I, I see the question um, and I think insecticide resistance is something that we want to keep an eye on in terms of the net use behavior. At the same time, uh, the sort of phenomenon of people noticing that the net isn't killing mosquitoes anymore has been around, uh, you know, since the beginning of insecticide treated nets. Um, you know, people who were working at the time when we first had the nets that needed to be retreated uh, will remember the, the old Netmark slogan, uh, mosquitoes kill, uh, kill mosquitoes, you know, with your net. And so people sort of started thinking, well, once my net stops killing mosquitoes, then maybe it doesn't work. Um, so that's been a phenomenon that we've had over the last 20 years, essentially. 
Um, and I think given that the net use behavior ratio hasn't changed substantially since then, I would say it's not a huge, a huge risk um, to effective malaria control that, that we need to deal with. Certainly we wanna make sure that people are not discarding their nets early because they feel like they don't work. Um, we wanna make sure that people are confident in the ability of their nets to protect them. We wanna make sure that people you know, hang onto their nets and treat them gently and you know, wash them not too often so that they last a long time. Um, but I would say you know, this, this challenge that we have with people's perceived efficacy of the nets is not a new challenge but it doesn't seem to have affected um, any of these data over the last 20 years. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, what would you recommend to governments and donors, donors regarding this in reference to universal net coverage? Uh, personally, I would recommend distributing additional nets. And whether that's through additional mass campaigns or changing the way that we do mass campaigns or adding continuous distribution channels uh, that maintain uh, ITN access at high levels throughout you know, a three year period instead of just the beginning. Um, I think for me, that's, that's the swiftest solution to the current problem. Um, not that it doesn't have uh, problems as a result in terms of you know additional nets additional cost um, but yeah i think the the picture of access that we have is is under target and if we want to get it up to universal coverage we're going to need more nets thanks hannah uh, just a few more minutes uh, for questions here i don't see any new ones in the q a but uh, let's give folks uh, couple of seconds to see if anything else comes up. And Watto Joseph uh, is asking, we have heard about the plant Artemisia that can be used to prevent and treat malaria. How can we explore that opportunity since people trust more plants than an ITN, than ITNs, and we know that ITN has a duration? Thanks for that question. Um, yeah, so I mean, Artemisia is the base of, you know, Artemisia and combination therapy, which is the frontline therapy for malaria treatment uh, pretty much worldwide at this point. Um, so, I mean, I think where people trust the treatment more than the net uh, is something that we've been um, looking at, especially in the in the urban data, but not only the urban data um, that we have. So for example, if you're living in Accra and your house has screens and you have electricity and some of you have a fan, um, you know, there may be not that many mosquitoes biting you at night and you know that the pharmacy just down the street, you can always get your treatment. So if you get malaria, which hasn't happened to you in the last five years, you can just go get treatment. Therefore, you don't need to use your net. I think that's the kind of psychology that we're seeing among a lot of uh, a lot of people in Ghana, a lot of people in Nigeria. Um, and, and that's something that we want to maybe make sure that we have uh, a way to deal with. You know, one question for me as an SBC professional, as a malaria control professional is, is it worthwhile to try to get those individuals to use a net that they don't want to use and maybe don't need to use because they're not, you know, a high proportion of the population getting sick um and and having a, a burden on the health system so i think that's you know something to debate maybe within the countries um you know how much effort do you want to put into increasing itn use behavior in the highest wealth quintile if that's really where the problem is problem so to speak um if they can get treatment easily you know that's that's not a bad uh situation for them you know on an individual sort of health level so I think you know treatment and prevention need to work in tandem, and we need to take into account in our prevention efforts uh, the opportunities for people to get treatment, um, so that you know we're reducing transmission, we're you know trying to clear uh, parasite from people through the treatment process, helping them not get reinfected, um, so that we can reduce the transmission burden overall. And we have another question from Patricia. Uh, in a country like Liberia, where net use is the only means of prevention from malaria, is the use to access ratio of nets more in the urban quintile or in the rural quintile, and why? 
Um, thanks, Patricia, for that question. So let's jump to Liberia really quickly. Um, here we go. And we can look at that um, if we scroll down to the wealth and residents. So if we want to look at urban and rural, so the data that are shown here, um, 2009, 2011, 2013, 2016, there's a little bit of a sort of higher level of ITN use given access among the rural populations. Even in 2016, it's a little bit higher. In 2011, it was, you know, a, a little bit higher. But for the urban uh, populations, it's not much different and it's still what we would call high. So it's above, you know, 90, above 90%. Um, you know, 94 versus 96, you know, in the 2016 survey. So we might say, okay, so urban is lower than rural, maybe we want to get it up. But in, in most cases, you know, these are basically the same. They're high, I would say, uh, you know, there's not much um, boosting that you might need to do based on the urban or rural residents in Liberia. You may need to look for other target, target groups. And we have um, another question coming in here. Just a minute. Um, from HP, thank you, Hannah, for this presentation. Uh, do you have any feedback to NMCP to make them aware of their country situation about ITN access or use? Thanks. Um, yeah, we have uh, disseminated this website through the Alliance for Malaria Prevention and listservs. Um, it'll be going out as well over the Vector Control Working Group listserv. I think many uh, NMCP managers are, are part of those two groups. Uh, PMI has also received this and they're doing their malaria operational planning now, uh, you know, starting in August and going through, I want to say October, November. Um, and actually the maps from this website are being used in the malaria operational planning process um, explicitly. So I think over the course of the next few months, um, all the NMCPs will be hearing about the website um, and, and using it, uh, hopefully, uh, as they do their, their, their PMI planning and their global fund planning and um, their national strategic planning. Thanks, Hannah. Um, we, let's see, we have another one coming in. Um, we're close to the end of our, of our webinar time, but uh, Jeffrey would like to know if there are any good examples of decisions taken by uh, an MCP manager to stop LLIN distribution campaigns when the program transitions from low burden to pre-elimination and focus on targeted distribution. If so, what actions are taken to prevent rebound of malaria among the risk population? Hi, Jeffrey, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I think a few of the PMI countries uh, either are in pre-elimination or have zones of pre-elimination. Um, I would say that that question is a larger one that we can answer on this particular webinar um, and be happy to, to take that offline uh, with you if you want. Thanks, Hannah. And uh, Luke would uh, like to know, um, as housing improvements are made across Africa, uh, more are using metal, corrugated, corrugated roofing. I understand that while hotter during the day, these homes are cooler at night. It will be interesting to track the impact of these housing changes on uh, LN use as people prefer to sleep under LNs when it's cooler. Have you seen any trends or do you have any data on this yet? Yeah, thanks, Luke, for that question. That's a great one. Um, it is something that we're trying to look at. Um, obviously, improved housing uh, is, is a big area of opportunity for malaria control. Um, I think in some studies, it's shown to have an association with a 50% reduction in incidence, uh, which is almost or about the same as the effect of, of ITNs. Um, I think we are, I am looking right now at some data uh, to see whether ITN use among those with access is different in households that have improved uh, or that are, that are screened or closed off. Um, are there some differences, uh, you know, once people maybe feel more protected in a closed house? Um, and I think it would be interesting to also look at, as you suggest, um, sort of the type of roof that they have and whether that might be associated 
uh, with differences in ITN use behavior, whether it's more or less. Um, it's tricky to kind of control for all the things you need to control for there. Uh, improved housing is more common in urban areas. Um, but, you know, trying to, to develop a, an analysis for this, I think, is, is a place that we need to go, certainly as a, as a malaria community. Thanks again, Hannah. And as we get close to the end of our webinar meeting time, I am uh, going to ask folks to go ahead and complete a poll, four question poll, very brief, uh, that just went up on your screen. We would appreciate uh, your feedback on uh, today's webinar and I'll turn it back to Hannah for her closing remarks. Thanks everybody for joining. Uh, we're really excited to, to talk with you today um, about this. We hope you can share the website with your friends and colleagues and make use of it. And as always, you know, we're here to make it as useful as we can for you. So as you have suggestions or if you notice that things don't look quite right for your country, please let us know. Um, we're happy to make adjustments and uh, really wanna help you do the best social and behavior change programming that you can for ITNs. Thanks very much.